This is just where you got to have a little bit of Holy Ghost discernment. We could have just maybe sung a few more, had some more people shouting in the altar, and uh, go to the house and said, boy, wasn't that a good service? We could have done that. We probably, we probably could have done that, but I do feel like, and if, and if I'm wrong, the Lord will straighten me out later, but I do feel like uh, that it was time to not kill it, but turn the switch a little bit. Because I want to give you something tonight that I think is going to change. Uh, you know, every, every church has some changing points, right? Some things where you can look back and say, that was a, a life-changing event or that was a life-changing message. And so I want to give you something at Acts 10 tonight uh, that I think is going to change maybe your life, maybe change the way you look at some things. And it was based off of a question uh, that Sam had asked this morning. And I've been thinking about it all afternoon. Uh, Acts chapter 10. Let's look there at verse 38. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Uh, You can remain seated tonight. But it was based off the question about the satanic possession, oppression, whatever you want to call it. Some people have a a hard time with the word uh, devil possession. Um, We're Bible believers here. Uh, I do believe that a Christian can be possessed. People say, I don't think a Christian can be possessed. I think he can just be oppressed. Well, that's fine. You can look up the word oppression in the dictionary and you're going to have a hard time being able to tell the difference between oppression and possession. I mean, if the devil's got your mind, he's got your hands, he's got your feet, he's got your heart, I mean, I don't know what you call that, but I call it possession, all right? And, uh, but I want you to notice here in Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, I want you to notice what the Bible says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good. That's a pretty bold statement right there, right? I mean, that's a pretty good testimony. What, what was the testimony of Jesus Christ? What was one of the you know, final things that could be said about him? Well, he just went about doing good. Boy, I've been reading the Gospel of Matthew this week, and uh, that ver- this is literally the verse that came to my mind. When you read about everything, Jesus was just a good man. Now, notice he wasn't just a good man, but he was a good man, amen? I mean, Jesus was a good man. I mean, he was one of those, he just, everybody he got around, he just helped. Everybody, listen, Jesus ruined every funeral he ever went to. (laughs) Think about that for a second. Jesus ruined every funeral he ever went to. I mean, Jesus, I mean, listen, uh, literally people could not be around Jesus and stay sick. I mean, all they had to do was get in and just touch the hem of his garment. They would literally lay people out in the streets in front of them. And as he went through, he didn't mind at all. He just... Touching them, healing them. He just went about doing good is what the Bible said. Amen? He was a good man. And he still is a good man. Amen. One old preacher says God's good all the time. He can't help it. He's just that way. Amen? Amen. He's just that way. But now notice, who went about doing good and healing all that were, notice, oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. I want to talk to you for just a little bit, and you've got to be careful talking about this kind of stuff because you don't want to talk things up into existence. But I do want to talk to you a little bit based upon the question that Sam answered. I just couldn't get it off my mind uh, and, and just thought. I want to preach to you about, uh, about oppression by the devil or possession by the devil because it's something that's real. It's something I've been made aware of a little bit more uh, here lately, and I think that it's going to help us as a church. Let's pray quickly, and we're going to look at some of this stuff. Father, we love you. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. Thank you, Lord, for letting us be in church tonight. God, I pray that you help me. Uh, Lord, this is a sensitive subject. This is a, a, a uh, uh, not dangerous, but a, a cautious subject as we approach it. Lord, I pray that you just help me. Give me wisdom and words to say and take all those that I don't. And I pray that you'd help me as I try to expound some truths in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I want you to notice here uh, that the Bible says that Jesus went about healing all that were oppressed of the devil. If you study the Gospels and you study, especially the book of Matthew, you're going to find that oftentimes devil possession is in the same list as things like diseases and palsy. It's in the same list as things that would uh, be identified as medical sicknesses. And I think it's interesting that a lot of the things that uh, that we you know associate with something being devilish, the world 
put or used to put it as something that was a medical diagnosis or something that was a mental issue. For example, homosexuality used to be known as a mental issue. It was a mental problem. All right, you can go on through all those different things. We can go through down a whole list. That's just the one that's popping into my mind. But all these things that we would associate with the medical problem, uh, I would say this, I would say the Word of God also associates with the medical problem. Chemical imbalances and things, uh, obsessive compulsive behaviors and different mental issues and even anxiety. I mean, I don't know if anybody in here doesn't suffer at least a little bit from anxiety. Amen. I mean, everybody gets anxiety. I mean, if you've ever had a panic attack, you know how horrifying those can be, right? All of those things, as I've been studying kind of this week on this subject anyway, uh, I've been looking at this thing. It almost seems like that we act like devil possession or being oppressed by the devil or satanic influence is something that we just try to resist and avoid and just try to gear off. But if we're going to be honest with ourselves, really this is more, it's not just the fact of, well, I'm just going to completely isolate myself, but it's more like you have to look at it from the idea of being sick. It is a sickness. Jesus treats this thing like it is a disease, and it is a disease. It's a disease that not only you can become infected with, but it is a disease that you can infect others, or you yourself, if you're around somebody that is uh, possessed or oppressed by the devil, you can also become sick with it. So I started looking at this thing, and I, I want to I go through the Scriptures here. Uh, one of the most important things about sicknesses is the fact an ounce of what? Prevention is worth a pound of cure. It is much easier to prevent cancer than it is to cure cancer, right? It is much easier to prevent diabetes than to cure diabetes. Type 2 diabetes, 100% curable. You know how? Diet. Exercise. Now, I want you to stay with me here. You say, man, preacher, I wish you'd just let us just go on and worship and have a good time. Well, hang on a second. Sometimes the Lord wants to put on the brakes with some things. Notice here, Jesus went about healing those that were oppressed by the devil. There are gateways that allow things in. And we've got to be making sure that the gateways are all closed. Making sure that there are things. I'm going to tell you what, man. The devil's deceitful and the devil's good at what he does. Now, we don't want to give him too much credit and glory. Jesus Christ is all-powerful, and he has full power over the devil. Amen? Amen? But the devil is good. What I'm trying to get at is the fact you are no match for the devil. Right. You've got to understand and realize, well, I'm just going to stand right up, and I'm just going to fight the devil. And I, you, you'll, you'll lose every time. Well, I'm just going to try to reason with the devil. He's way smarter than you, ma'am. There's no need in trying to argue or reason with anything. You say, well, I'm just going to try to figure out how I got here. I'm going to try to figure out. I'm going to try to analyze. And I'm going to try to, to compartmentalize all these things. You're going to drive yourself crazy trying to figure out why you're the way you are. Some people are just messed up. In fact, everybody's just messed up. And we're just all messed up in different ways, right? That's yeah. right. I mean, you may struggle with some things that I don't struggle with, and I may struggle with some things you don't struggle with. We're all screwed up in the head. We all got problems. We're all, listen, we all have our own things that we struggle with, but at, in the, at the end of the day, if you try to figure out every single facet of, well, why am I like this, and why do I do this, and why is this that way, and why do I feel this way, and what you try to do that, you're going to drive yourself crazy. Amen. Right? You try to figure out why the way you are, you're going to drive yourself crazy. Just understand it doesn't matter how you got here. Here you are. You're in the predicament. You're in the situation. You've got satanic influences, the dev devilish influences that are all around you. It seems like you can't get any peace. It seems like things are always... Understand this. If you try to figure out why, you'll drive yourself crazy. All you've got to figure out is, I don't know how I got here, but I'm going to get out as quick as I can. Now, I heard a preacher preach a message one time, a checkup from the neck up. So what we're going to do is we're going to go on a spiritual checkup. Now, here's what's going to, be, here, here's what's going to maybe spook some of you out. We're going to talk about some things that maybe you didn't think anything of, but that's a possible gateway for the devil to be hitting in. A checkup from the neck up. We're going to do a checkup. First of all, the first checkup we're going to do is things going in through the ear gate. 
Better listen to me. You better be real careful about what you're listening to. Right. Amen. Well, preacher, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with this side of the other. Well, you better be careful. Uh, you do know who the minister of music was in heaven originally. Right. Right. It was Lucifer. Right. And don't you think that he knows how to manipulate music for his own... For, uh, you've heard me say it a million times, folks. For everything God has, Satan has a what? A counterfeit. So if God has good music that he uses for his purposes, don't you think the devil has music he uses for his purposes? Don't you think that he would know how to use that? And I'm telling you, music puts you in a passive state. Either for the good or for the bad. Have you ever just been singing a song? Like, have you ever just been singing maybe one of the psalms we do? Great is the Lord. And before you even realize that you've been singing that song for 10 minutes and you just catch yourself singing it? You didn't even think about it, just started coming. That puts you in a pat. Now, that's a good state to be in, right? That's when the Holy Spirit is flowing through you. And one of the signs of being Spirit-filled, according to Colossians 3, 16 and 17, is the fact that you are making melody in your hearts to the Lord, right? That's one of the signs of being Spirit-filled. But on the contrary wise, uh, you can get in a passive state and the wrong thing get in. Have you ever, and I've done it here before, and it didn't, it didn't go quite as good as I thought it was going to go, but I have taken some lyrics before of some popular pop songs and actually read, I didn't have any of the music, I, would, I, would, I was just reading the lyrics, and the lyrics were so vulgar and so disgusting. Yeah. And people didn't even realize that that was what was being said. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. How many of y'all remember that, that song, uh, uh, and hopefully you don't, but uh, what is it, uh, um, Bohemian Rhapsody. Y'all remember that? That song? Starts out real slow. It's a, uh, I don't want to sing it, obviously. But it starts out real slow, and the beginning verses are, uh, Mama, I killed a man today, and, uh, you know, there's cold chills going up my spine, and all this kind of stuff. Talking about he had AIDS, and he's about to die and meet the devil. You listen, you go back and listen to it, or read, read the lyrics. He's talking about it. In fact, he's got AIDS. He's about to die. Understand that music puts you in a passive state. Even, even good old boy music. Wow, well, that's just some good old country music. You better be careful. That puts you in a state as well. It makes you passive. It's an emotional state. I shed a beer in my tear, or excuse me, shed a tear in my beer today for me. Well, however the heck it goes, man. Understand this. That put, be careful about what you're listening to. That music will do something. It'll affect you. I remember Ralph Sexton Jr. way back in the day. I was in the ninth grade. I heard him preaching on the tent. He was telling stories about people listening to that rock and roll music, listening to ACDC. And a guy got in such a bad mental state that he was trying to cut his own teeth out. He said, listen to what they're saying. They're saying, cut your teeth out. I remember I was talking to some people. said they saw a devil up on the mountain. They was out camping saw a devil out on, up on the mountain. I said, what was you listening to? They said, we were blaring ACDC. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You dabble with that stuff, man. It'll, it'll get in your mind. Yeah. It'll get in your mind one way or another. Better be careful about what you're listening to. Yeah. Better be careful about the people you're listening to. The counsel you're taking. Going in here, get ladies. Or the, what, listen. Ladies, I love you. I'm not against women. But women are 95% driven by what they hear, not by what they see. Men are the exact opposite. That's why, a, that's why a girl will be, a nice, pretty young girl will be hanging off the hip, or hanging off the arm, excuse me, of some ogre Shrek looking somebody. Yeah. Right? I mean, look at my tail. I mean, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, he was thinking me and Laura, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's why you'll see some kind of just ugly looking son of a gun. And you've got some, you know, little pretty girl hanging off his arm. Because women are not as driven by what they see. They're driven by what they hear. You better be careful about what you listen to. So there's the ear gate. How about this one? Then there's the eye gate. Well, this is the big one. Because the eye is the what? The light of the body. This is the big one. We won't get into all the nitty gritty of it because I'm, I'm not here. Because the, the, the point of the message is to ultimately get you to a place where we can close off these gateways. So I don't want to draw too much attention to the gateways. I just want you to cut them off, right? But the eye gate, I mean, everybody, the first thing pops in everybody's minds things you're not supposed to look at on the internet. Yeah. 
Yeah. That stuff will mess you up, man. Yeah. Amen. It'll mess with your mind. Look at the stuff you shouldn't look at on the internet. I don't even want to say the name of it. You know what I'm talking about. It'll mess you up. It does, it literally, listen, they have literally found out, they have done scientific research, it rewires your brain. It is more addictive than cocaine. It does something to you. And it messes with you, not just psychologically, but physiologically. What does that mean? That means it messes with your mind so much, it starts messing with your body. Absolutely. And used to, it was something that men had a problem with, but now in the sick, twisted days we're living in, now there's a pandemic of women as well. You got to cut that thing off, man. Amen. These are the worst things that ever plagued Christianity right here. Right. These Amen. are the worst things. Amen. We, are no be- we are no better for technology. I'm just going to be straight up honest with you. The more I start thinking about it, the more I'm like, man, the Amish really had something. Mm-hmm. They really had an idea. We are no better for cause of technology. I love the lights. I love the AC. But man, I'm telling you what, technology has ruined this generation. Ruined it. You can get anything and everything you want right here on the, your finger. Listen, you literally have the world at your fingertips. That's a dangerous thing to have. You can look up anything. You can look at anything you want to look at. You can read anything you want to read. You can Listen, I'm going to tell you what. This hours and hours of scouring the internet. I mean, just doing, looking at the internet for hours and hours. Even if you're not looking at anything bad per se, there's something demonically charged about being able to just sit down in front of a screen for three hours and not even realize three hours have passed. Right. Right. You can like it or lump it. There's just something. Even if you're just looking at videos that aren't even wrong or whatever, there's something demonically charged about a lapse of time where all of a sudden you look at it and, wow, it's 1.30 already. TikTok, man, I deleted TikTok. I mean, the videos can be no longer than 60 seconds, can be no longer than one minute, and next thing you know, you have gone through two hours of looking at that stuff. I mean, that is literally, literally 120 videos at the, at the most you've gone through looking at. Yep. If not more, because they were shorter than 60 seconds. Ridiculous, man. You better be careful about what you're looking at. Better be careful about the eye gate. Better be careful about wandering eyes. Jesus said a man's committed adultery with a woman already in his heart if he looks upon her with lust. Right. Yes, sir. Right. So you got the eye gate. Better be careful about what you look at. Better be careful about the movies you watch. You better be careful about the things that you look at and see. Not only that, you got the ear gate, you got the eye gate. How about this one? You got the mouth. Now, here's the interesting thing about the, about the mouth. The, ma- every, the ear gate is a one-way street. The eye gate is a one-way street. But the mouth is a two-way street. Je- remember what Jesus said, it's not what goeth into a man that defileth a man, but it's what comes out of him, proceedeth out of the mouth of man. You better hear me. The Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth what? Speaketh. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to lay it all out there tonight. You get mad at me if you want to. I can tell the things you've been doing and listening to and reading and watching just by the way you talk. Amen. I can tell when some listen, you can tell by the way somebody talks if they're carnal or not. You can tell by the way somebody you can tell by the way somebody talks if they're a Bible believer. I can tell listening to a man preach, even if he doesn't hit on anything major. I can just tell by the way some guys preach that they're Bible believers. I remember I was down at a camp meeting and uh, one of the pastors I preached for, Brother Nolan Johnson, was preaching. I, I'm going to be honest, it wasn't anything you know, dynamic or earth-shaking. He didn't get up there and expound any great truth. But I could just tell, the first time I'd ever met him, first time we'd ever been in a meeting together. But I could. Li- he just stood behind the pulpit and all, almost just really talked. Uh, he was crying and testifying some. And it wasn't anything profound. But I could tell by the way he was preaching and by the things he was saying, even about basic stuff, I could tell he was a Bible believer. And I went up to him and introduced myself, and sure enough, you know, he reads Ruckman and Peacock and all that kind of stuff. I could tell. You can tell by the way somebody's talking. What you talk about, what you talk about a lot is the things that you're 
watching and the things that you're viewing and the things you're putting in. What goes in will come out. Don't you tell me you're not obsessed with something. The only thing you want to talk about is that subject. Satanic. Satanic. not just what comes out, but we understand also what goes in. Now, Jesus said it's not what goes into a man, but we understand if you're always putting things that you shouldn't put in, eventually, if you're putting nothing but trash in, eventually nothing but trash is going to come out, right? Of course, there are things that you shouldn't put in your body. Drugs is a major problem. Drug, I mean, there is hardly, there is hardly a home or a family in this building that has not been affected illy by drugs. My family, and we could go through, and I, I'm, I'm just about every family, somebody, somebody somewhere has been affected either in the past or right now been affected by drugs. And there is no exceptions to the rule. Well, if you raise your kids this way, this way, this way, and this way, it'll guarantee they never get on drugs. There are no exceptions to the rule. The devil has pushed those drugs either by the way of street drugs or prescription drugs because those are just as much of a problem anymore as the street drugs. I, I know somebody right now, a complete pill head, lost her kids because she's a pill head and all she's doing is just getting those prescription drugs. Better be careful. Alcohol. The Bible says not even to look on the cup when it is red. Well, I'm just going to drink a little bit take the edge off. I had somebody tell me just yesterday, just yesterday I had an individual tell me, they said drinking alcohol never took the edge off. It only made my problems worse. Right. He said, I only thought about them more. Right, right. He said drinking alcohol, he said the world gives you this idea that you'll just get calm and relax until you just gently fall asleep. He says, no, you think about it and you cry and you squall and you bawl right. until you pass out. Right, right. Now, the last thing, and this is not a gateway, but all these things. We just talked about three. I'm, I'm about done. We talked about the ear gate, the mouth gate, and the eye gate. Now, stay with me here. All these things are entrances to the greatest battlefield in Christianity today. And it's not what's going on in the public schools, and it's not what's going on in the courthouses, and it's not what's going on in the White House. It's not even what's going on here. The greatest battlefield right now is the mind. Yeah. And it's always been the mind, and it always will be the mind. Right. And what we're doing by all these movies and all this music and all this internet stuff, and I mean... Put whatever it is in there. You are literally giving the devil access right into the battlefield. Right. I'm going to fight the devil. I'm going to resist the devil. I'm going to da, da, da. I'm going to read the Bible all that I can. And I'm going to pray all that I can. Watch how much that I read. Twenty chapters of my Bible today. Oh. Devil, hey, come on in, man. I read 20 chapters. Oh, man, I'm impressed with you. Look at you, Mr. Super Christian. You think the devil cares you read 20 chapters a day if all you're going to do is go home that night and open up the gate on the TV or on the cell phone? You better close off those gateways, man. If you're going to stop, a, if you're going to stop a, uh, uh, if you're going to have a dam, see, here's the thing: when you've got a, a, a large body of water and you dam it up, that pressure builds and it builds and it builds and it builds, and then all of a sudden, and what's going on is, is you're letting all this stuff in, letting all this stuff in. You're not cutting off the water supply. You're not cutting off where the source is coming. And so you're trying to do all, listen now, you're trying to do all these other things to try to heal yourself and try to get better and trying to get all these thoughts out of your mind that you don't want there. And you're trying to get all these other things out of your mind that you don't, don't like. And you're trying to improve yourself. But the problem is, is you can do all that you want to do. The problem is 
And it's not the fact of what you're doing, it's the fact of what you're not cutting off in your mind. Am I making sense to anybody? So you're going to beat your head against the wall trying to get your problem solved and trying to get all these things out of your mind when at the end of the day, it's not the fact that you're not reading enough. It's not the fact that you're not coming to church enough. It's not the fact that you're not praying enough. It's the fact you're doing all that stuff and it's just not doing anything for you because you're leaving the back door open. Cut off the cell phones. Cut off the TV. Cut off what you're doing. Throw out all the bad music. Be careful. Be sober. Be vigilant. For your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walk about seeking whom he may devour. And all these satanic influences coming in, man, the devil will get in any way he can. He's like a mouse. (laughs) How do they get in? Stink bugs. How in the world do stink bugs, stink bugs get in our house? All the windows are closed. All the doors are closed. They get in the craziest ways, man. That's exactly how the devil operates. And tonight, the devil is desired to have every one of you, and he's desired to have me. Why? So that he can sift us like wheat. Yeah, the preacher... Uh, it's going to be a, a rough battle if I, if I start cutting off these gateways and if I start trying to get my mind healed and if I start seeking out and crying out to the Lord. And listen, we act like, we act like that it's an overnight process. Well, I'll just go home and, uh, and read my Bible and pray and you know, delete whatever this or you know, cut off this or whatever that and, uh, and then I'll just be fine tomorrow. <laughs> you must have been born last night. The longer a devil's been in you or the longer a devil's been on you, however you want to look at it, that's, listen, you can't expect something that's been in you for 15 years to come out in a week. This kind goeth not forth but by prayer and what? Fasting. Like I said this morning answering the question, fasting's not a one time, like you don't just fast for, you know, 30 seconds. Like, oh, I mean, I'm fasting right now. I'm not eating, I'm fasting right now. That's not how it works, is it? Fasting is a process. Fasting takes days. Fasting is something you do over and over and over again and repeat it. You better listen to me. You better make sure that you are not stopping short of the victory because what happens is, is that devil just dig on deeper and dig his claws into you deeper. You've got to break away. And then you know what you need to do? You need to realize that you're no match for the devil. You need to realize that all these things you're doing are great. You need to cut off the gateways. But at the end of the day, realize that it's got to be the Lord helping you or it's nobody will. He's the great physician, isn't he? Amen. He's the chief apostle, isn't he? Isn't he the high priest and apostle of our profession? Amen. He's going to be the one to do it. Without me, you can do what? Nothing. Nothing. There you have it, folks. And what I'm trying to say is the devil's going to try to get in. The devil's going to try to sneak in. And you've got to make sure that you are cutting off all the access points in your life. You've got to make sure that you're not getting... You say, preacher, that's going to be quite the battle. You better believe it's going to be quite the battle. It's going to be a battle right here, and it's going to be horrible, and it's going to be one of the worst things you've ever went through. But if you're willing to purge yourself and to purge your... Plead the blood of Christ on yourself. Listen, plead the blood on it. I plead your blood, Jesus. I mean, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works? Amen? Memorize some verses about the blood. And eventually, I'm here, and I'm done. We're not even going to give an altar call. We're just going to go home tonight. But I'm going to tell you this. Eventually, the fog will begin to clear. The results will begin to happen. And the Lord will give you the victory. But you can't stop short. And you can't open those gates back up. And you can't go backwards. Right? And He can heal all those that are pressed by the devil. I've been pressed by the devil before. Probably been oppressed by the devil this week. But he can heal that, amen? All right, let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for your mercy and grace. Thank you, Lord, for letting us be in church tonight, God. Lord, we had a good service starting out. Lord, I I feel like I needed to preach that. I really did. And, Lord, I I appreciate the good service you gave us this morning. Lord, the good, uh, enjoyable song service we had even in this service. And, Lord, I pray that you just be with us. Bring us all back safely on Thursday. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. All right, you are dismissed. I love you.